So you know how everybody gets a 50 millimeter or equivalent lens when they start in photography and videography? Yeah, this isn't a video about that. This is a video about the 24 to 70, which is usually the first zoom lens that most people will get when they start in their photography and videography journey. So I recently got the Sigma 24 to 70 DGDN art series lens for my Sony cameras, so Sony E-mount 24 to 70 2.8. Basically, the only reason that I got this over the G Master Mark II is that it's a thousand dollars cheaper. Before the Mark II came out, this was considered the best 2.8 24 to 70 for the Sony system, but then the G Master Mark II came out and it was just better, except it was a thousand dollars more expensive. So this one sort of still holds that like value position. I will talk about the lens itself in a minute, but Let's first talk about 24 to 70s, why everyone has them and why I got this one. Now, personally, I do prefer to shoot with prime lenses, but a lot of the time it's just a lot easier and more efficient to use a zoom like a 7200 or a 24 to 70 because you don't always have the time to change lenses if you're on smaller shoots and run a gun sort of stuff where having that zoom range where you can have wide, medium, and tight shots all with the same lens without even having to necessarily move too much. But once you get to those sort of bigger productions, you usually have time to set up everything and make sure the shot is exactly right. So that's when you can usually use primes to the best of their ability and not have to worry about changing lenses because that's just a thing that happens anyway. I made a video a little while ago saying how my next lens that I was going to get was going to be a 50 millimeter F1.2 G Master. And obviously, that didn't happen. I'm pretty sure since then I actually got the 7200 G Master and then now I've got the 24 to 70, but I've also gotten the FX30 in that time, which was not sort of on my list of things that I was planning on getting. It was not quite an impulse purchase, but it was a little bit of an impulse purchase. So basically now that I have a Super 35 and a full frame camera and I use them both with the same lenses, I don't want to necessarily be stuck with primes because if I'm switching between the cameras, I want to have that versatility. And if I got a 50, for example, on the APS-C, it'll be a 75-ish equivalent. So as much as I love telephoto focal lengths, it's not that practical for a lot of cases. If you're in a small room, a small space, or you just want to be close to the subject, it's not always practical to have those longer focal lengths. So I wanted something between the 20 mil and the 70 to 200 that I have now. So this just covers everything in between that bar 21, 22 and 23 mil. But it basically means that now on the FX30, this is effectively a 36-ish to a 105-ish. And it's just a 24 to 70 on the full frame on the a7 IV. And like I said, I love the 7200, it is great. But a lot of the time it's just too tight. 70 mil is just not wide enough for a lot of cases. So when I'm doing shots like this, I actually have the camera, you know, a couple of meters into my, let's call it a closet. And then I have my room behind me so I can actually get the distance within the room. Whereas if I was just in my room itself, I don't think I'd really be able to shoot 70 mil, especially with the FX30. So 24 to 70, this is gonna be, basically it's gonna live on this camera. So most of my content going forward, for now at least, are uh, mostly going to be shot on the FX30 and the 24 to 70, at least the shots that I shoot in this space. But then also when I shoot out, this is a little bit more versatile than the 7200. Again, depending on what I'm doing, but it is, it's just more versatile. Now onto why 24 to 70s just are so popular and it, sh it shouldn't really be something that I need to explain, but going from 24 all the way to 70 mil, that's going from the border of ultra wide to the border of telephoto. So you're getting everything between ultra wide and telephoto and in that entire standard range, you know, most people are going to be wanting to shoot at, you know, 24, 35, 50, 70. These are all very common focal lengths. And unless you're doing anything specialized where you need ultra wide, like vlogging or shooting really wide landscapes, or you're shooting sports or wildlife and need a telephoto, a lens like this will do pretty much everything except those very specialized things. And that's why so many people have 24 to 70s and why there are so many 24 to 70s out there. And equivalents, like for APS-C, a lot of, 
a lot of manufacturers make like 18 to 50s or 18 to 55s in that sort of range. Okay, now onto this lens in particular. This is the Sigma 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 art lens. It has an 82 millimeter filter thread. It, this one is for Sony email. I think they also make it for L mount. Physically, it has a autofocus manual focus switch. It has a custom button, just like most of the G and G master lenses. And it also has a lock for the zoom ring, which like it does prevent it from, you know, creeping and stuff like that. But if I unlock it, barely anything happens. Like I'm getting the tiniest bit because the zoom ring is actually quite stiff. So it's actually a decent amount of resistance to actually move it, which is very different to some of the other lenses that I've used. For example, the 7200 G Master Mark II, it's a lot lighter and it does feel quite different to the zoom ring on this. So this stiffness is really good for, you know, preventing that creep and preventing, you know, if you accidentally bump it or grab the lens, you're not going to move the focal length too much but it does make it a bit more annoying if you're trying to keep a really steady shot and zoom because you have to put more tension onto it. And also, as I found out shooting the gimbal video, when we were zooming with the camera just on the gimbal, you really had to, had to give it a lot or even hold the camera still so it didn't just try and force on the gimbal motors. The one thing that they could do to basically fix th that issue is do what Sony did with their G Master Mark II and have a switch where you can change it between smooth and tight. And then you basically have the best of both worlds just by flipping a switch. Speaking of the zoom ring, one thing that I don't like about it is that it's the opposite direction compared to the Sony zooms. Now I've gotten used to the 7200 and just using that. And every time I go to zoom this still, I try to zoom it the wrong way. So if I'm at 24, and then I try to zoom in, it doesn't go anywhere because I'm all the way zoomed out. This lens zooms counterclockwise to zoom in, whereas the Sony zooms rotate clockwise to zoom in. I find that a little annoying and I don't get why they do it. I guess different companies just do it different ways and Sigma just made a decision to do it that. But I don't see why they didn't just go, oh, let's do it the same as Sony because, you know, people that have Sony cameras likely have Sony lenses. But I don't know. This is an externally zooming lens. So as you zoom into 70 millimeters, it does telescope out. So, you know, you could have issues with, you know, water or dust or something getting in, in there. It is dust and water resistant. So it's probably not going to be an issue, but it is just one of those lenses. The zoom ring and the focus ring have like this bit of a, it's a bit of a rubbery texture and it's a little bit more rubbery than the zoom ring and the focus ring on the 7200G Master. And I think I think they feel pretty good. They're very tactile. They're quite deep in their grooves. So you could probably almost fit a like follow focus gear system on this without actually putting a strip on it. And speaking of the focus ring, it is reasonably smooth. It has a little bit more resistance than the 7200. I know I keep comparing them, but it's the other zoom lens that I have. So I'm gonna keep comparing them. But as with most photography lenses, it does have a reasonably short focus throw, so it's not gonna be ideal for manual focusing in video. That's when you need cinema lenses. What are you gonna do? But the autofocus is also pretty good. You know, it's a modern lens for modern Sony cameras, so it's gonna be pretty good. Now the lens hood is huge. Because it is an 82 millimeter filter thread, the lens hood is, you know, obviously bigger than that, but it's just huge. Like that's just ridiculous. And I actually haven't used it at all, apart from putting it on when I first unboxed it. And now I literally have not had this on at all. I guess, yeah, it would do a good job for what lens hoods do, protecting the front of the lens. And also, you know, it's reasonably deep for something that does go to 24 mil. So it would actually potentially prevent a reasonable amount of flares unless you're going straight into the lens. Yeah, I don't really use it. The good thing about it though, is it does have a lock, so you can't accidentally take it off. It will not move if I twist it, but then, you know, press the button and it comes right off. So that's pretty good. The locking system is something that before the 7200, I didn't really realize was handy, but it actually is like, you can have it on there and it, it's just there. Also made a short form video about lens hoods. So go watch that as well if you're curious on my thoughts about lens hoods. Regarding like image quality and all the performance aspects, I don't think I really need to go into that. There's plenty of other people that have talked about that. Gerald Undone has done 
a good video about this, comparing it to the other 24-70s. A lot of people have compared this to, you know, the G Master, the G Master Mark II, and it is considered a very good lens. The image quality is very good. The autofocus is good. I don't really need to tell you about that, so that's going to be pretty much it for this lens, and that's going to be pretty much it for this video. To conclude, I didn't want to get a 24-70, but I kind of just did because it makes sense. It makes sense to have one of these lenses, even if, you know, down the line I get a full set of cinema primes or something, this one will still always be there to be that, you know, run and gun all around lens that you can use anytime and for anything. So that's the 24 to 70 and why everybody has one. If you're interested in the 7200 that I talked about so much in this video, go watch that video and subscribe and do all the other things while you're around. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye. I can't, I can't reach the lens, it's so far away. I'm shooting at like 90 mil right now.